Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Um, and today, carrying on with talking about the International Booker Longlist, I wanted to talk about The House on Via Gemito by uh, Domenico Astarnone um, and translated by Una Stransky. Um, and this is uh, an interesting book. I think it kind of came quite lauded. It's sort of a winner of the, the Strega Prize, uh, quite a renowned literary prize um, in Italy. And... Um, it's sort of just this this book that kind of had a bit kind of going into kind of a bit behind it as it was kind of coming into the prize um and as has sort of been a little bit of my experience so far with some of the international booker prize books i started off having a bit of a difficult time with this book and eventually sort of pushed through and found something really um quite engaging about it um so the core idea and this is another book that sort of falls kind of like undiscovered falls into this odd space between um fiction and non-fiction it's sort of autofiction but the author is quite careful at various points to say actually maybe none of these things happened if there are any um any things that are relevant to sort of the wider world then um or you know if if you recognize anybody's name you don't no you don't it's not real um and so there's sort of a, a reimagining almost of his own family history while sort of telling some parts that are quite factual in it um i will talk a little bit about spoilers later in this review but just to sort of start off the first bit will be spoiler free and I, i'll avoid talking about those where i can so to talk about this book kind of more broadly a kind of in some ways you do have to engage a little bit with the front cover of this book um so this front cover um i sort of had a look about because it keeps on being mentioned um in the story um is a um uh, a painting called uh the drinkers which uh, in it's italian um and that is painted by uh, Domenico Stranone's, Stranone's uh, father, um, who the ma most of this book is about. Um, and in many ways, this is the a story of a man trying to shake off the shadow of his father. And so it's really interesting compared to something like um, Undiscovered, um, where actually this very similar theme comes up, um, where there's a sort of thing about the name that you inherit and the person that you sort of have to fight against to some degree to carve out your own identity. Um, and so Domenico in this book, often uh, sort of just called Mimi, um, is sort of watching as his father, this sort of painter, this sort of well-known figure um, to some degree, um, starts to make a name for himself in painting and um, all the way through him trying to create an identity for himself as a painter he comes up against some quite difficult things so he comes up against people who are basically saying well you're not good enough or if you are good enough actually you can't get this grant because you need to be a full-time painter and oh look at you you work uh, you know you work on the railways you can't possibly do this and so there's this sort of odd thing that kind of comes up about him in sort of uh, particularly sort of neapolitan um sort of sociopolitics almost the sort of you know, you can do this, but maybe not this thing. And we, you know, uh, compared to the rest of Italy, you know, uh, Naples and the kind of surrounding area is often kind of the slightly seen as the sort of the the slightly weird cousin sometimes. Um, from from what I hear from Italian and Neapolitan friends, um, in the sense that the sort of you know the dialect is very strong, and so much of this book references dialect, and so much of the book kind of deals with this idea of otherness. And so Domenico, the character, maybe maybe the author, maybe not the author. Um, Domenico, the character, um, basically spends a lot of this book trying to um, understand who he can be um, in amongst some quite difficult um, things. So he's sort of watching as his father is this figure, uh, you know, becomes this figure who is uh, a respected painter for some of the paintings he does, but he also is... Um, sort of quite a difficult man in many, many ways, to put it lightly. You know, the book starts with um, a reference to Domenico's father hitting his mother. Um, and the book kind of touches back on some of those themes of that kind of violence, particularly quite gendered violence, um, quite often. And so it can be quite difficult and quite challenging to read some of those passages, um, particularly when we almost see sort of parts of it coming, where we see the sort of shame um that surrounds Domenico's father and because of that shame we sort of know that potentially there's more violence maybe on the way and sort of and so little Domenico can only really watch this happening um and kind of 
sort of struggles to work out how to resist his father, how to be a stronger figure, but also to kind of try and escape where he can. Um, and so it's this really complicated story in several ways for me, because um, it's very much sort of told as this sort of family tale of a son trying to understand his father and trying to break out the shadows from him and trying to find commonality at times with him. But it's also deeply of its time. It's really, um, you know, he's sort of looking at uh, these sort of, you know, the book was published a while ago in, in Italy. Um, and so it's sort of interesting sort of seeing it on a list now um, in that sense because of how actually would some parts of this book read differently at the time versus now. Um, you know, it, it's it's an interesting book just because of how sweeping it sort of tries to be as this big family drama and family epic, but all while dealing with some quite complicated family histories. And I think a thing I found quite challenging is, you know, the 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 sort of balance between narrator and author gets really blurred because we know that Domenico, the character, is based on, if not exactly, a replica of Domenico, the author, and therefore the character Domenico disagreeing or agreeing with things, can that be read as the author also agreeing or disagreeing with those things? And that sometimes throws the tone of this book into some sort of quite difficult and challenging territory, sometimes in a really interesting way, sometimes in a way that's a bit more complicated. But it, it means that sort of, you know, we almost need a slight endorsement at times from the author sort of coming in and saying, well, this thing is clearly wrong, you know, and, and we can't always have that because of the how Domenico, the character, is trapped within the story and, and sort of within everything that's happening. So, yeah, I kind of, I struggled a bit with the middle passage of this book, I think, because it's quite... There's a lot of family history going on and not all of it I found quite as interesting <laughs> as other parts, let's say. But I, I thought towards the end there was something about the way this book really picks up and it's kind of set the, the um, set up all of the kind of dominoes to fall at the end. You know, we start seeing young Domenico, and this is not a spoiler, uh, sort of young Domenico sort of start to kind of carve out his own identity and try to understand who he is. Um, and how does that look when you're the boy, for example, in this in this story, who posed to be the person pouring the drink? You know, there's a, a tender almost moment where um, his father asks him to model doing the pouring just so that um, Domenico's father can kind of capture the shape of his body. And so in some ways, Domenico is sort of brought up and inculcated into being part of this painting and being part of his father's success. But equally, his father's success is this really temporary sort of finger in the wind sort of style thing where sometimes he'll win a prize or he'll be nominated for something and then sometimes he's not um and there's this sort of critique of the art world um because his father as soon as he's not up for a prize or doesn't win a prize he basically says well you know um there's a thing where uh, you know, you, you get nominated just to, uh, you know, somebody asks you who your friend is and you nominate them for a prize. And then next time when it's uh, your decision to nominate someone for a prize, you nominate your friend, somebody somebody else's friend, the person who did that for you. Um, very much a kind of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. And so this book, I think, really then plays with some really interesting things about every character in this book being trapped in some ways in this world that's slightly unfair, um, particularly unfair if you're um, of a lower socio socioeconomic class or particularly if you know you're seen as being an other part of Italy um, and so it kind of plays a lot with that in a way that I thought was quite interesting it sort of is a family history that seeks to tell the history of um, of Italy and of kind of you know that time um, but then also sometimes can be quite challenging reading as a result because things feel slightly unresolved or they feel slightly um, complicated in terms of where they sit narratively um, and that's something that I found interesting um, and there are some mild spoilers I want to talk about so I'm going to talk about those in just a second but this is just your announcement that I'm about to do that um, if you do need to stop here fine great um, I hope you do enjoy this book if you give it a read I really did struggle with parts of this I had to really kind of persevere through the middle part of this book but I ultimately found it quite, quite rewarding at the end um, but yeah keen to hear people's thoughts um, on this book 
So to go into some spoilers, um, and this is only a relatively mild spoiler, but I didn't want to spoil the humour that comes up with this moment in the book and the slightly crushing element. So at one point, Domenico's father in uh, is sort of delighted to find out that he's been selected to have his painting shown in this um, this sort of certain gallery or this certain um, event. And he is really excited gearing up to it until he finds out that it's something like 807 or 809 um, fil uh, uh, paintings are all being shown. And for him, that suddenly takes away the joy of this. Um, and this felt like a really interesting and slightly pivotal moment for me, or at least a moment that really stood out, because I think of what it says about the rest of the book um, in that we're allowed this moment of almost absurdity and kind of humour um, but it's also crushing. It's, you know, we're watching as somebody who finally thinks, yes, I've been accepted by the, um, by the kind of the powers that be. I've finally been accepted by the, the academy, uh, basically. I've now found out that I'm one of 800 and something. And that really diminishes what that feels like for him. But equally, there's something in that, that about the way that sets up so much of the rest of the book and how this book talks, because we sort of get this, this sense that Domenico's father throughout the book is this, um, is kind of just wanting to catch a break, but also is thinking of himself as being amazing and brilliant and kind of needing that external validation. And I think the way the book does that is really clever in the way that it plays with kind of status and class and various other things that he already has this perception of himself Domenico's father um, as being um, put upon or being under the thumb of somebody else or you know not being part of the elite and this sort of cruel thing of almost feeling like you're part of the elite and then suddenly having that ripped away from you sort of almost sets up a little bit more about um, the kind of quite complex character that he is and that's not to excuse the violence or whatever else but it almost positions some of that violence as being um, a, a response to shame and a response to lack of power um, and how he'll then do anything to get that power back. And again, what he does is horrific. It's horrible that he is so violent, um, often to, to Domenico's mother. Um, but it kind of then sets up a little bit more about this complicated relationship that Domenico has with his father of when his father does die, he sort of can't quite reconcile it or square it with his perception of this man because people are sort of celebrating this man saying you know what uh what a brilliant painter or what a great man what a great part of society he was and Domenico is like well yes but also no like he's also a man who was violent to my mother and he's also he was also a tyrant at home and he was also complicated to be around because you know we had this this great moment together where I was his um, his muse or I was his model for this this big painting of his but equally um, we you know we had all these other moments that weren't that um, and so I think the book just really plays with that in a really interesting way it's sort of such a um, a detailed examination of the kind of complicated roles that we have with parents and even though I found that middle part of the book a bit of a struggle I think there's something about the way this book brings that together that I found really interesting I will say, though, it's sometimes uncomfortable reading because of that, because we are watching as this man can be this really complicated person whilst also being a real beast um, and being really quite horrible. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of it sort of leaves a sort of slightly uncertain feeling um, in some ways as well. I'm going to leave that there because there's a lot to talk about with this book and I think it's best just approached by reading it. But I was pleasantly surprised by it after I really enjoyed the first bit, really started struggling and then came back towards the end and actually really enjoyed it a lot more again. Um, but I hope you are doing well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this book. And if you do want to leave comments, just please be mindful of people who might not have read it yet in terms of um, any spoilers or whatever as well. Take care. Speak to you all soon. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy reading the rest of the International Book Along List. Take care. Bye bye.